Hey everybody. So a while back on January 6th, 2012, I came out with this video here. It's called For All Those Who Play Into the Illusion of Our Voting System. And basically the message was, and as you can see with this horrible Gallup poll here saying that the uh, most admired people in the United States, starting with Barack Obama, and then you know we've got uh, you know Bill Gates on here, Pope Benedict, and I think on the other side it had uh, Queen Elizabeth, and you know just craziness, right? So a lot of some of you folks came back and said that you know who trusts Gallup polls? Well, look, okay, the point was to give you an idea and make you understand that your votes do not count okay your votes don't count and the message was to say if you're gonna play into a broken system because for example you don't uh, you don't put gas in a car with an engine that doesn't run right well same thing for a broken system why would you vote in it but if you're gonna vote in it then what I, the message was is that make sure that you stay on top of it because there's gonna be all kinds of craziness going on so Basically, we all know that some funny stuff happened in Iowa, right? And thankfully, some people were on top of it. It appears they tried to give, I believe, Romney, they tried to give him 22 votes instead of two or something crazy like that. I'm, I'm, I can't remember the specifics, but there's already stuff going on. And so if, if you could imagine the subtleties of how they could just keep doing that kind of thing over and over again, well, I'm going to show you something here tonight that's uh, pretty scary, and um, and then I'm going to back it up with some stuff that I think uh, looks a little bit corrupt, and because I did a little bit of digging myself. So listen to what she has to say first. Vote fraud may happen with an open system that we can see, but then we can see it, or it may happen with a concealed system we can't see that's controlled by a corporation. But what we have to have is a structure so that we can see what's going on because if we can see it that will ultimately help prevent vote fraud or catch it or expose it so what's going on now it, it's unbelievably dangerous uh to the whole democratic structure in fact it removes the democratic structure what we have is uh already we have one company which is in charge of results reporting for it. I wrote in my article over 525 United States jurisdictions this fall. It's actually going to be over 900 jurisdictions in 26 states. Instead of, like, you'll go to your county website and you'll look at that and it'll say, oh, here's the results. Well, not really. A lot, in over 900 counties, when you go to your county website, you're actually looking at a redirected site out of Tampa, Florida. And so all the results for 26 states and 900 locations are actually going to Tampa, Florida before they're reported. And then we add to that. That firm that reports the results is then purchased by another firm out of Spain. And that firm out of Spain also produces the voting system. Now there you get, and by the way, the type of voting that that firm is, uh, which is called CYTL, S-C-Y-T-L, the type of voting that it's promoting is the worst kind of voting. It's internet voting. And the reason it's the worst is because the public can't see who cast the votes into that internet system. They okay. So what I decided to do was, since it's a software system, and since I know a lot about software, I just started to do a little bit of digging and I decided to follow the money a little bit here and see what's exactly going on. So the reason she says all these, um, all your votes in all these different places will consolidate into Florida is because this company right here, SOE Software, which also does um, election management or voting management, uh, they were bought out by that company Siddle, okay, which is this company right here. And so Siddle basically allows people to do, and they're actually promoting internet voting. And so what it says up here at the top here, it says electronic voting is regarded by many governments as the next natural step in the evolution of the electoral process because of the potential to increase voter turnout rates. But see, voter turnout rates um, doesn't matter if they're not accurate. And here's the reason why it's not transparent. It's not transparent 
because the only person that can manage the data is somebody that is familiar with, how, with knowing how to use a database. So if you can imagine that everybody is on their computers doing internet voting, and by the way, all you get apparently when you do the internet voting is you get this, um, you get something kind of like when you buy something on, online and it shows you uh, print this screen to make sure that you've got your, your digital receipt. That's basically what you get, okay? And um, But see, that doesn't do you any good because your digital vote goes out there and it disappears at that point. Nobody can keep track of it. The only person that knows what's going on with all that is the person that's in control of the database or the IT company that's in, in control of the database. So that can be done at a, you know, they have several different levels that you can do it at, but the danger with that is, is that those, that data could be skewed, even though they say they have uh, security in place and all that kind of stuff. I can tell you this, I've worked, I've done a lot of work with companies, very large companies, doing database management and stuff like that, and I can tell you this, databases get, they get corrupt in some places sometimes. And it's always easy to say that it's an accident okay um, all kinds of things can happen and the problem with that is is that it's very easy to 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 skew the data it just simply is and so now here's the real problem SOE was doing the um, they, they were doing the reporting but see now the reporting is going to be owned by Siddle and Siddle is based in Spain okay so we have all of these jurisdictions, there was 525, I believe there's 900 now. Uh, all this data is going to be coming in, and Siddle's going to be owning it, and they're based in Spain. Well, guess what? I decided to look up Siddle, do a little bit of research on them. It turns out Siddle has had one investor. The name of the investor is Balderton Capital Management, and guess where they're based out of? UK. All right. So in 2010, Balderton Capital Management, when, when I read about Balderton Capital Management, they typically invest in the millions to start with. So they've got a pretty good invested interest in this company uh, for whatever reason in 2010. And so then I decided to go ahead and take a look at Balder Management and see what it consisted of. Here's our leaders at Balderton Capital. Okay. Um, so I went through each one of these guys' profiles, and uh, so check this out. Tim joined Balderton as a general partner in 2007. He was previously, previously a partner of Goldman Sachs, where he spent 18 years at Goldman. Tim held various roles, including global head equity uh, capital markets and vice chairman of Goldman Sachs International from 2005 to 2006. Is it starting to get a little bit corrupt sounding to you yet? So we've already got one partner here from Goldman Sachs that was a vice chairman of Goldman Sachs 2005 to 2006. And the only company that's invested in Siddle, which is doing election management, is Ballardon Capital based out of the UK. And one of the partners is now with, with Goldman Sachs. Now let's take a look at this, Mark Evans. Prior to becoming general partner partner at Balderton in 2002, Mark was the CEO of a U.S. Uh, software company and uh, entrepreneur in residence at Benchmark Capital in Menlo Park before his EIR experience. Mark spent 15 years at Goldman Sachs in Europe, Asia, and the U.S. Okay, now folks, there's only 10 partners here. Tim Bunting, which it says partner right here, he's actually a general partner. Okay. Um, and then we've got Mark Evans. So these two guys right here, these, these are both Goldman guys. Now listen to this right here, Charlotte. Um, the top of her stuff is not that interesting, but check this out. Before massive Charlotte, Ann spent a year as a part of a task force established by Prime Minister Tony Blair to drive delivery of the government's key objectives. Okay, so now we have three of the 10 here that have invested in the election management system that's going to be doing <laughs> the reporting in, from Spain based on the United States elections. Okay, so um, I'm sorry, but uh, this sounds extremely corrupt. Uh, we already know where Goldman Sachs take is. 
We've got uh, a previous experience at Tony Blair Task Force on Government Objectives. And, and by the way, if you take a look at these guys, um, Siddle, if you take a look at them, where are they here? They're, uh, here's where I can start seeing a pattern develop because when I take a look at this company, and you can think of an internet voting process, right? And so they're, man they're gonna manage the US's voting now it may be done in Florida, but Siddle owns um, SOE now, so it's basically Siddle's reporting, and they're based out of uh, Spain, and the only company that's invested invested in them is a company in UK, where all these people are from Goldman Sachs and have and have ties to Tony Blair. So what's interesting is if you take a look at these guys' news, okay, they basically they're going to provide voting in Canada. Um, they're going to provide, looks like they do stuff in all these other countries. So what I'm seeing is a pattern forming. So if you can imagine all these people doing internet voting and it's all being controlled by Siddle because they're the leading guys, then where's your central control hub? It's from a company that is, that's invested in Siddle based out of the UK. Hope that's interesting to you guys and I want you to realize that you've got to pay attention uh, to what's going on with this voting system. I'm telling you, your vote does not count, and they're going to stick it to us if we're not careful. I've simply, personally, I would not vote at all. That's my own opinion, because I can tell you this is so corrupt, it's so rigged. Um, I mean, I've even got a 30-second video of one of the senators during the um, Food Safety Act, when it was voted on, who left his mic on down on the floor and basically said the whole system was rigged. The whole system is rigged, folks. So if you're voting to make yourself feel better, then um, I don't see what the point is because you should feel guilty. If you're going to play into the broken system like it is, then you must, you must stay on top of it and make sure you have a way for it to be transparent because although these guys say they're transparent, they're not because I know how database systems work. I know how the Internet works. And I'm telling you, once you cast your vote, it disappears at that point. You have to trust somebody to pull up these nice, pretty graphs for you for whatever data they skewed into the into the mix. I'm telling you, um, this is very dangerous. So I just want to give you all a heads up. Y'all take care. Talk to you soon.